and three lines here. Did you see that? Excellent. Now, I want you to draw a circle, draw another circle, draw another circle, and take all these three circles. I'm just going to attach them to each other because I don't want to make, make a mess here. And just, I'll draw a line to form one single nerve. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do today is give you nice, beautiful, gorgeous mnemonics so that you can understand. Instead of memorize, you memorize how to draw it, but remember you have to know how to draw the skeleton, right? Before you understand how things are working. So the first thing I want you to realize is we're going to take these three pieces and call it the LTN. That's called the long thoracic nerve. What nerve, what muscle does the long thoracic nerve innovate? Oh, wait a minute, I think I know it. Oh, it's the serrator's anterior muscle right here. So, here's my challenge. This is how you actually remember. It's by clinical application. A patient's gonna come to your half office and be like, Doc, you know, I've been having problems putting my hands over my head to comb in the morning. I can't really reach anything under the shelf. You know what? Because if their long thoracic nerve is damaged, right here is your serratus anterior muscle. And if you just want to see, I made some anatomy videos and you actually see how it works. But what it actually does, it pulls your scapula all the way and allows you to actually AP duct right above your head. Can you see that? Literally, for you to actually move your hand, you don't understand, you have to actually move 15 degrees, another 180, about 270, all the way down. See that? If that's not working, how, what you tell them to do is, okay, um, I want you to push against the wall. And literally, you tell them to push against the wall, and you see the scapula literally pointing at you like, BAM! It's called wind scapula, baby. So, if you get a long thoracic nerve dysfunction, which I'm just going to erase this bottom part, because, you know, we don't really need it. Right? Serratus anterior. And you get a wing scapula. It's not chicken wings, but you can call it that if you want. It's wing scapula, literally. Now, we're done with one nerve. That's all you need. I'm telling you. On your test, this is classic on the board to USMLE, complex exam, even second year medical students, first year, anywhere, classic. That's, you can't get better than that. Long thoracic nerve. We're done with one. Let's move to the next nerve. There's a dorsal scapular nerve here. I'll call it DS. Dorsal means your back and your scapula. It's very easy, right? So something is attaching to your scapula to keep them together. So when I tell you to do this, right, kind of retract your scapula, there's this bunch of muscles back there that's actually holding them and pulling them to part, together. It's called your rhomboids major and your rhomboids minor know that. Is there any clinical applications? No. Sucks for him, but hey, it's a lot more better things on board. The next line, I'm going to call it SS. And SS stands for supra, means above spinatus nerve. Supraspinatus nerve innervates what muscle? Hmm, I don't know. You know what? If it's called supra I'm sorry, suprascapula, I gave it away. Oh, yeah, I have it. Suprascapula, right? If it's suprascapula, it must be above the scapula. It's innervating your supraspinatus. But, you know what? It sends a branch and actually innervates your infraspinatus also. You got two bucks. Two bucks, you know? Buy one, get one free. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Now, the next guy, it's called lateral pectoral nerve. If there's a lateral pectoral nerve, because this is the lateral aspect, which I actually forgot to tell you. And when I mean lateral, you know, if you look at your hands, this will be the lateral, this will be the middle, right? Medial aspect. So lateral aspect, which is right here, and there will be a medial pectoral nerve. Medial pectoral nerve and the lateral pectoral nerve innervates what? You ever seen those guys? Work out, work it. Yeah, big chest. So your pectoral is major. And the medial pectoral nerve by itself innervates your pect minor. 
Any clinical significance? No, I know, it sucks. But, hey, if the nerve is not working, what would happen? You're packed in my anatomy. I love the money. It's your fam, right? F A M. Packed is my fam. Where did I get that from? Fam? Family? <laughs> family! How do you do? You hug your family, right? Using your chest. Pectoral is major. So fam means you have to flex your hand. You see that? Flexion. A deduct immediately rotate your humerus to actually do that by your pectoral major. But is there any clinical significance? No. So, but that's a beautiful mnemonic. Remember that. Are we feeling this? Can, can you see how I kind of try to understand things? It's kind of repetition. Now, let's get to the bread and the butter. This uh, upper, right? subscapular and lower subscapular nerve. Gee, what can they be doing? If there's upper and this lower, where are they innovating? They must be innovating something in the scapular. The subscapular is muscle. That's right, that's what they innovate. You gotta know that. They call themselves subscapulars. That means sub means under the scapular. Tell me what muscle is right under your scapular. The only thing right under there it's just subscapular is muscle. <laughs> in the other, we can't get better than that, guys. It's not hard. But in the middle, I kind of use TD. Thoracodorsal. Thoracodorsal nerve. Right? And what does your thoracodorsal nerve innovate? Hmm. I wonder if you know. Well, I'll take a guess. But it is the lumbar, right? You have your latissimus dorsi muscle right at the thoracolumbar area. So they call it thoraco because it's thoracic. Because your lumbar goes from your like around T4, almost almost T4 all the way down to about L3, L2 before you get the thoracolumbar fascia, right? Let me kind of just make a little schematic right there. You got your right here. And there's a little diamond shaped thoracodorsal that's your thoracic. That's your latissimus dorsi, which is innervated by your thoracodorsal, because your dorsal is your back nerve. Right? So, what does the latissimus dorsal actually do? Did you guys actually notice like it looks like your hand? Let me see if I can make this out for you guys. And that's another hand here. I know you, but this guy's like the most silliest guy I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I am. You know why? Because I try to make things funny. And I like to make them fun. Look, it looks like that. So packed, it looks like you try to. Please, can I get some food? So it's called meal. M E A L. Where did I get that from? That means this muscle. Immediately rotates, extends my hand, AD that baby, and it's the lats. That's how you remember it. I told you breaking plaques is easy. Nobody just tells you how to really gonna get around it. And that's what I'm trying to do here, guys. Alright. Now, is there any clinical correlation with that? No, I know. Not all of them are really fun, but we get in there. Are you on point? Good. Over here, there's the medium.